These were the questions that we asked him after the last cycle. Remember? Cost reduction for another round. How would another round be different? What, was this, what would be the new pro Look, $7,100. Crazy, right? This was on our credit card. It's a lot of money. When David Chisholm and Carly Weiner first went to a fertility clinic, they thought within a few short weeks, they'd be pregnant. You guys are ideal candidates for mm -hmm. IVF. Ideal, uh, they said ideal. And we thought, great. You know, we, don't, we only have to do this one time. We're gonna have a baby. David's cancer diagnosis as a child damaged his sperm. Their only real hope is IVF. So far, they've spent $25,000. How much more can you afford to spend? I, I think we have one more round. Maybe, and that's if our parents agree to help us a little bit. And the money pushes doctors and patients into making tough choices. This goes into either end right there or right there, and uh, it's pretty painful. If you don't want this piercing you, that is a thick needle. Carly had to inject herself with hormones to stimulate egg production. And when the time came, these would-be parents had to decide whether to implant four embryos at once, inflating the chances of dangerous multiple gestations. IVF is expensive. And if a patient can really only in their lifetime afford to do this once, I can tell this individual their pregnancy rate's gonna be 50% better if they transfer two versus one embryo. Of course they're gonna choose two. David and Carly have seen other couples go through IVF six or seven times, travel to different countries, and find themselves drowning in debt. You have to have a walk away point, and I think everybody does. And uh, I mean, otherwise you could spend, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And, and we know people who have who have gone into the six figures. Darn and done. No good. Give me a cut. <laughs> no, my lips. <laughs> <laughs> so Mark and Lisa, uh, we're going to be doing an embryo transfer. Couples are spending a fortune to get pregnant, and it's not always a guarantee. But now doctors are looking at a better way to predict outcomes. It's a first-of-its-kind predictive model being tested at this Ottawa fertility clinic. We use statistics of our own activities and our own successes, plus the features of the couple to predict whether putting one or two embryos in would result in a multiple birth. Up to 100 variables are compiled. We can also say that if you've had a treatment that's been unsuccessful, we can use the statistics to predict whether your next try will be successful or not. The key, of course, will be if patients actually heed the advice of the predictive model. The clinic is studying that right now. It wasn't always this way, this juggling act of whether would-be parents can even afford to get pregnant. Before 1994, IVF treatments were funded in the province of Ontario. Now only women with two blocked fallopian tubes are eligible for partial government funding for IVF. As it stands, the vast majority of people pay out of pocket for fertility treatments, and some say there are only babies for the rich. Does everyone have a right to have a child? Well, the system we have now is if they do, um, that right is contingent on what kind of income you have. It's just odd to me whenever I think about the fact that, that Ontario will fund abortions, which I fully support, and that they will fund sex change operations. Mm -hmm. But they won't fund this. They won't fund this, and I don't understand why. I have no patience for people who say medical, it's not a medical condition, it is a medical condition. You know, I don't lump this in with tattoos or with something you did to yourself. It may be that income disparity is just one part of it. It also depends on where you live. In the United Kingdom, Italy, France, Spain, and Iran, IVF treatments are funded by government. In Canada, Quebec is the only province that funds three cycles. We're backwards. We have a backwards health system and we have a backwards attitude on infertility. Professor Amir Adaran says it's more than income and geography. He says not funding IVF is a violation of human rights. He and his wife, who had IVF, have launched a human rights tribunal challenge. It's discrimination. The, the government of Ontario has decided that women who have blocked fallopian tubes are entitled to free in vitro fertilization. But if the woman has a problem with her ovaries or with her uterus, tough luck. Then she has to pay for what other women are getting for free. Well, that's discriminatory. Well, if that's discriminatory, then the case is worse for men. There is no accommodation for their infertility. There is a precedent for winning this fight. 
Back in 2006, the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal ruled in favour of a member of the military, saying denying IVF treatments was discrimination on the basis of disability and sex. Other challenges have failed because the courts decided infertility was not a life-threatening condition and therefore didn't warrant treatment, an argument some say is flawed. Our system will pay for a man to have a penis prosthesis installed if he can't have an erection. That's paid for. Now, not being able to have an erection is not life-threatening, <laughs> but our system pays for that. And there is an economic argument. Expert reports found the Ontario government could save up to $600 million over 10 years if it funded IVF. The cost savings would come from fewer multiple births and the intensive care that often follows. Back in Ottawa, Amir Adaran knows he has a fight on his hands. When you sue the government, you're up against the biggest law firm in the country. Do you think you'll win? I'm sure we'll win. Absolutely we'll win. Discrimination is very plain to see in a case like this. Kelly and Bill Laverdure can't wait for the wheels of justice to turn. They've been trying to have children for over a decade. Now their quest for a child will see them leave everything they know. You see all these people and relatives with kids. You're, you're happy for them, but deep down you're, you're jealous about it. Bill's diabetes has left him with nerve damage, which causes his sperm to flow back into his bladder where it becomes damaged. They've been trying intrauterine insemination with donor sperm without success and they've reached the end of their rope. So right now we currently have one donor sample left. And what happens after that, if that doesn't work? If that doesn't work, hopefully moving to Quebec in the summer. And why do you feel you have to move? Uh, the cost is significant, probably in the range of 10 to 12,000, depending, that's per cycle. And it's not something that we can afford to do in Ontario. It's medical tourism within our own country. Quebec is the only province to fund three cycles of IVF. The move is something they've been anguishing over for months. Looking back, if we would have made that move, we could already have a family. Kelly and Bill know it might be paid for, but there's a waiting list across the river in Quebec. Not having a family, you really start to second guess all your other goals. Like, obviously, most people want to own their own home, but then what does that mean if you can't fill the rooms, you know? so. <laughs> they don't know if it will work, but they can't live with themselves if they don't try. So you don't want to look across the river and think that's all a 20 minute drive, 15 minute drive that prevented us from having a family. It's just too close to not take advantage of that. We don't want to look back and regret not making that move.